however the fuck I want. She has like Maleficent in Cruella clothing. She's wicked. She was wicked. She did not feel like her Cersei character at all. No, she felt very different, but very like Cersei let loose. I think that's what she said while we were watching it. <laughs> she brought a lot of action to the later half of the movie. Yeah, she saved the latter half because the latter half was a little bit boring. Right. And it would have been a slog had it not been for her literally beating the shit out of Oliver Twist. Her just going crazy and bringing that psychotic energy really vamped up the movie. And I got to bring it to her. And like she, she goes there. She like kills some of the kids and you're like, oh, shit, she killed the kid. And it makes it, it makes it intense. Yeah. I mean, what is there to it say? It made it fun. And then not only that, now you're looking forward to seeing her as a villain in other movies because I want to see her continue to explore this villain. She has firmly said, I am comfortable being the villain. I can be female villain. Right. Watch me female villain and i will i'd like to see her do an anti-hero role an anti-hero role yeah most anti-heroes are like book of eli sympathetic she's not gonna do that which i love no i mean i want her to be a bitch but i want to care for her right. too you know like I, I i want her to have a good backstory you know i do love lena hetty I, i've been a fan of her since sarah connor chronicles she elevated the movie a lot in a way that Michael Caine did yeah, not. Yeah, Michael Caine was he could have been. Yeah, he could have been bad and dumb and ridiculous. We've seen him do that. It's fun. That right. would have been fun. He could have been I wanted serious. more like like Austin Powers, like Faja. As where you just get some bylines from him and his character is more confusing as to what his motivations are. Right. Who's he, who he is aligned with. Right. He's the old man leader of the group that... Is slowly going senile, I guess. Because he isn't in charge. No, not really is Bill. But the movie was a fun movie. I, I'll watch it again for sure. I'm down to watch it with other people. It wasn't my favorite movie of the year. I think, obviously, my favorite movie of the year. You all should know by now. Do you want to get into... How about we talk about Dear Evan Hansen? Dear Evan Hansen. Okay, so, firstly... It was there... another movie that we rented. Another movie that we Another rented. movie that cost $6. It was another musical... And I like bad musicals, but if you put out too many of them, producers are going to get afraid to make musicals. Very unfortunate. I'm concerned about that because we've had some bad ones. A we've lot had, of bad ones. We had Cats. We had Diana this year. Oh, yeah, Cats. We had Dear Evan Hansen this year. Dear Evan Hansen has the same songwriters as The Greatest Showman and La La Land. Both movies that we have watched. Both better movies. And a big problem Dear Evan Hansen has is a very similar problem The Greatest Showman had where every song is like a blockbuster hit. Dear Evan Hansen, every song is a power ballad. <sighs> There's multiple issues with it, from the overriding theme and concept to simple, basic, conceptual elements of the plot. Like, why did the kid actually kill himself in Dear Evan Hansen? I mean, you find out that he is going to therapy, but it is not alluded on any more than that. And right. we do nothing else than to paint him as a, a villain. And then you have Dear Evan Hansen, who just right off the bat starts leeching off of this dead kid's life. <laughs> and then you have Amy Adams. Who, who leeches off the sad kid's life. <laughs> she looks at him with these leering eyes. Oh, man. Yeah, I know. It, it, it was predatorial. It's predatorial or emotional vampire at best. When she asks him to tell him about her son, it is... It's like you can almost see her ears perk. Right. It's, it's weird. My son? It's weird. He's talking about my son? Tell me more. The relationship with the dead son's sister, of course that's weird. Of course that's weird. Of course it's uncomfortable. Of course it's awkward. Right. Uh, okay, so weird. I never bought it with the movie. Like The premise? Well, that, that he was into the sister. I never bought it. He seemed like a gay kid. And then all of his interactions with his obviously gay cousin, their friendship, like that was incredibly homoerotic. That entire number was homoerotic. And it was the best number of the movie. It was the best number of the movie, and then we got no more of that. Sad. It would have helped the movie out. I wanted more Dear Evan Hansen numbers. It shouldn't have been a trauma porn musical. I often wonder how bouncy the stage play is. I don't know. I, I think about that. <laughs> it's likely a little bit bouncier, and then you're able to forgive some of the... Contrivances. Contrivances because of the actual fact that it's on stage. Right. It helps smooth out some of those edges as far as a story goes. 
I don't think it translated well to an actual movie. I don't think it should have been made as a stage drama. <laughs> I, I don't think so either. It was inappropriate. It's it's rather inappropriate. The hashtag it, that formed around it and that the movie encouraged was you will be found. Hashtag you will be found. Which is supposed to, I think... Uplift. It's supposed to allude to Evan Hansen when he fell out of the tree slash tried to kill himself by jumping out of the tree and broke his arm and he was found. I, I guess. I yeah. guess. I take issue with it because it just, it sounds like the movie has so much to do with suicide and your hashtag is going to be you will be found. <laughs> as in the body, right? As in the body? Is that the suggestion? It seems inappropriate to me but then of course the whole movie is inappropriate but as far as bad movies go if you're watching it for bad movie the best you're going to get out of it is the cringe factor where right. does it sit on cringe factor do you feel it's pretty high on the cringe factor actually it's like eight right there's for, a, for me it's like an eight or nine <laughs> there's a bit of cringe in there um, like a lot of it has to do with amy adams but also the subject matter is pretty cringe and the songs the songs are pretty cringe because like we said every song is a power ballad even like side characters side characters have these overdrawn out power ballads that are very long-winded <laughs> and always hit with a high note at the end even the sister the sister has one like halfway through the movie as far as other aspects of it being a bad movie, it does kind of fall flat, as far as I'm concerned. It's it, not fun. It has that one fun number in the very beginning, and then that's, like, about the most you have. I have unpleasant bad movies that I would rather watch than this one. <laughs> not because this one's more unpleasant, but because I enjoy the grind of them more. I might give Dear Evan Hansen one more try. I, I'd give it one more try. It's okay as a bad movie, it succeeds in some ways for cringe and for awkwardness, for inappropriateness, but it fails in a lot of other ways that you might want it to be bad. With only Dear Evan Hansen singing almost the entire time, 98% of the musical is just him. Having these sad, sad lyrics. It's just droning on and on, and you're just like... And he's like always on the verge of crying. <laughs> I mean that that's like the one image you see every time you search up the movie it's just like Evan almost crying in the school hallway Evan almost crying in front of the school in the auditorium Ben Platt takes it too far Amy Adams almost crying while Ben Platt is almost crying in the same room <laughs> Amy Adams role in this movie is so similar to her role in Woman in the Window it's weird it's almost as though the death of her son caused her to go crazy, and she stepped right out of this movie, divorcing her husband, moving into a single flat by herself. And became an agoraphobic. And became agoraphobic. Woman in the Window. Now, you didn't watch that one. I did not. I watched plenty of movies like it, though. <laughs> More. So I, I knew already where it was going to go. It's Rear Window. I feel like Woman in the Window is better bad movie territory than Dear Evan Hansen. You get a lot more of the awkward, creepy Amy Adams with that emotional vampire kind of look that she's playing around with that she needs to work on. Love you, Amy. It's okay. She's working on her role for Lilith. She'll get it down. <laughs> Maybe. Hopefully. But in the meantime, it's pretty bad, and this movie is a lot more of that. But it does have good lighting, it does have some good effects, some good transitions, and it succeeds a lot in some of those ways. It tells a story that you... How, how could you not be familiar with Weir Window? It's been told a million times. I know. If you're not familiar with it, I don't think it would still be any surprise to you what was right. going on. I mean, it's Rear Window, except instead of a wheelchair, you have an agoraphobic. And instead of her being crazy... She actually is crazy, but she's also right in the end. Yes. In ways that don't make sense, but honestly make the last little bit of the movie fun. It definitely changes things up when things get all crazy at the very end. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be just totally spoilery for Woman in the Window for you, but it was a relatively fun watch that had some good dynamics with Amy Adams, and I think it serves for any decent bad movie night. Yeah. It has some decent cringe. It has some decent bad line deliveries. It has. I liked all the photos that I paled up for it for the Instagram. Like I feel like I got a lot of the movie out of just the stills. It has an unnecessary twist that makes no sense, but also serves to make the movie more fun. Right. So who doesn't? Who I doesn't... can. But is it as bad as the girl on the train? 
I haven't seen The Girl on the Train. The Girl on the Train was a terrible movie. Good, bad, or bad, bad. It dances the line. It dances the line. It dances the line. It becomes overly sexual with The Girl on the Train's movie. This luckily doesn't go that far in that direction. It still feels like she hasn't gotten over the death of her son, and she's looking for a male surrogate to figure it out with. Right. <laughs> it's Ben Platt. Ben Platt lives down the hall. You just don't see it. It's just because she comes latched onto this other family across right. the Right. And he just slinks off, moves away. Right. Yeah, the after events of Dear Evan Hansen are that Amy Adams, after a day of thinking about how upset she was that Evan Hansen wasn't actually her son's friend, realizes, wait, this just actually opens that up as a possibility. Oh, it's God. not creepy at all now. No. No. <laughs> he wasn't my son's friend. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But that being said, Woman in the Window is a fair watch. Not an amazing watch, but a definitely decent one. And right. Those are good to have around. Well, my favorite bad movie of last year was not on the Razzie list. It was Don't Breathe 2. A movie that honestly should have been able to make the Razzie list. It should have on the concept alone. I mean, they made the, the rapist blind old man of the last movie the, the hero of part two. And it came off pretty rough. And I think it just... <laughs> it did. I mean, it was like the shadow in the room. And I think it just goes to show that horror movies don't get enough attention when it comes to award cer ceremonies, whether that be the Oscars or the Razzies. It's true. It's unfortunately true. And I think Don't Breathe 2 was a great contender. Yeah, it should have been up, up there. It was a fun watch after watching Don't Breathe 1. It had a premise that was interesting. You didn't really know where the girl was coming from. You knew that there was a girl. You knew what had happened in the last movie, and you could only suppose, really, how she had come about to be in that old man's life. Right. I mean, she's 11 years old. And doesn't she remember her parents? Like, her real parents? No. Again, the spoilers. So... Her real parents blew up the house in a meth lab explosion, which caused her to lose her memories. Somehow. She the, blocked it out. She blocked it out the last 11 years of her life. No idea who she was. And then just this old man adopted her. Right. Which, honestly, that just makes a lot of it worse, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. A lot of the premise of the movie worse. Right. The way the movie starts off. I mean, do you want to explain that? So she's running through the woods, um, running away from something. The movie doesn't tell you what. The dog starts chasing her. And so you're, you're like, oh, the old man is hunting her down. And then she gets into a car and then she's caught by the old man. And she's failed her test, apparently. <laughs> the way it's shot is hilarious. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so funny the way that movie is shot and produced. It's conceptually weird. There's a ton of things to pick apart about it that just don't seem to make sense. Right. It goes it, a lot of different ways. Well, they try and justify things in the plot in reasonable ways. So it has all of those bad movie elements where we have bad justifications for things that don't really make sense. And you're like, yeah, I guess you're going to say that, oh, the girl came from a meth fire and that's why <laughs> she doesn't remember things. I guess. The guy who was stroking her hair on the way out of the bathroom was actually her dad. Right. And the only reason that they actually want her is to harvest her heart? Right. To give to her mother? Which they established organ harvesting was a thing in this town. If you're wondering where this town is, you're on the same boat as me. I was wondering the whole time, where is this place? There's no police. There's no, there's no order. They're in Detroit. They're Detroit, De Michigan. <laughs> I, I just looked it up. That's where it's at. Detroit, Michigan. You know, the most gangliest city in the nation. I mean, that's where where movies love to go for, like, this is Badlands. <sighs> the movie has a lot of fun bad movie elements. It has some decent shooting and things like right. that. So it has those kind of things. The movie has a crisis of who sh who should you be rooting for? It does. It has confusing things like... I mean, I guess at the end of the day, you're supposed to be rooting for the little girl because she's the most innocent in all this, but... <laughs> but you still are left with a lot of questions. You are. The whole time they are running away from these people that are pursuing them in this house and we're doing the whole don't breathe to formula, there's no weapons. They have no weapons. They don't find weapons. And the also, old man... nothing is set up like the way the first movie is. 
The first movie goes out of its way to set things up in shots. 